What's going on guys, RBG here, back with another Transformers video game update. It seems like we're in a weird time concerning the Transformers brand, because transparency and information have been very limited. You guys have heard me express my discernment with the current state of the franchise, particularly with the games, because Hasbro doesn't really seem as adamant about delivering a solid title as they're more focused on just expanding the brand. Over the years they've expressed how they just want to be a mega media conglomerate similar to Disney, but the way they've been going about doing so hasn't been the best approach. We're still wondering what's up with the Transformers Online game that's being developed by Certain Affinity, and it looks like the info is finally starting to surface, so we're going to talk about it today. Now before we jump into today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, G2A. If you're looking for a way to purchase the hottest video games without burning a hole in your wallet, you should really consider checking them out. They offer key codes for different platforms such as Steam, PS Network, and Xbox for half the price of the original. So why wouldn't you want to take advantage of this deal? You absolutely lose if you overpay. So go ahead and seize the win. You can do so by clicking the link that will be provided in the description of this video. But yeah guys, after what seemed to be an eternity, we finally have some more information on this new game titled Transformers Online or Transformers Impact. Not to be confused with the Chinese exclusive online shooter that was also called Transformers Online. If we're gonna be honest, that game was nothing more than an Overwatch clone except with Transformers, but I'll give it one thing, it has some pretty solid character designs. If you guys have been following some of the more recent titles, you may have noticed that the designs have been going more towards the evergreen aesthetic, which Hasbro seems to be enforcing on any team who wants to make a Transformers game. I know they're aiming is to make the characters as recognizable as possible, somewhat to unify the lore, but I think they forget that the Transformers Cyberverse is the main flagship show, and when people see those evergreen designs, they automatically assume that the game they're playing is based off the Sea of Cyberverse. And while there are some games that tie into the show like Transformers Battleground, not all the games are associated with that particular series, so their efforts to make things less confusing to the consumer still makes things confusing to the casual TF fans. If anything, it's best to allow the developers to let their imaginations run wild and create interesting concepts that set their iterations of the characters apart from others. And if they're going to enforce the evergreen design, at least give the team enough leeway to make them look even more unique. Even though Transformers Universe is essentially an extension of Transformers Prime, the devs did a good job of making them look unique while very similar to the TF Prime series. But anyways, those are just some things that I'm hoping Hasbro takes into account while supervising this new Transformers game being made by Certain Affinity. It's been roughly two years since it was announced that they'd be working on this title, and we now have official details thanks in part to these documents following the recent acquisition of Certain Affinity made by a Chinese global video game holding company called Lei Yu. Funny enough, their company focuses on free-to-play console and PC games, which I'm pretty sure this title will more than likely be. It's something that's been taking the online gaming market by storm, and companies are constantly looking for ways to give the players the option to play their games for free while implementing microtransactions you can choose to purchase if you want to. At the time of the license agreements between Hasbro and Layu, which dates back to August 2017, the Transformers Online game, which is powered by Unreal Engine 4 technology, was called Transformers Impact, and it was openly aiming to combine the best from Destiny, which includes a shard hub and combat spaces, and Warframe, which focuses on cooperative PvE frenetic combat and weapons free-to-play live service model. So we're slowly but surely seeing what Layu's approach is with this game. Something that instantly popped in my mind is when the documents mentioned that the game is going to be something like in the realm of Warframe is that it could possibly borrow some of the devs that worked on that particular title, because coincidentally enough, Lei Yu also owns the studio responsible for developing Warframe, that being Digital Extremes. So it's not too much of a stretch to assume that Lei Yu may just outsource some of the staff from Digital Extremes to make this Transformers meets Destiny and Warframe hybrid. While I'm not particularly sold on the Destiny style, I am relatively intrigued on the Warframe aspect, because Digital Extreme did an excellent job with that game. Not only does Warframe have an awesome design, but it also has an extremely fun and polished playstyle. It gives you that third person action experience while constantly doling out feature rich content that keeps you occupied for months on end. Like if there's ever been a studio that other studios should take notes from, it would be Digital Extreme when it comes to live service models. Because they've managed to pull off things that bigger studios twice their size haven't. I'd say the only thing that holds Warframe back is that it's not necessarily a title that does a good job explaining what it is. To the average consumer who isn't that familiar with live services, it can be somewhat intimidating and confusing to jump into, but when you do, you truly see the sheer amount of depth that developers have put into the game. I think that since the Transformers are so mainstream that this style wouldn't necessarily stop cautious consumers from playing it. If anything, it would get a lot of them to try it out, especially the design and presentation is on par with what was featured in Warframe. Since the Autobot and Decepticons already have an insanely diverse roster of unique characters, the possibilities in different playstyles are pretty much limitless. I'm just saying, man. But let's go over the story and some of the features, because this is very interesting. It reads as so. 
Many years in the future, the ages, a massive alien super weapon drifts into the soul system. The Autobots and Decepticons wage a fierce battle for the control of the derelict weapon. The battle ends in a massive explosion, decimating both Transformers forces and shattering the ages into massive shards. The shards rain down on Earth with devastating impact, instantly corrupting the land where they fall. Now with the combined fate of the Transformers and humanity threatened, the Autobots and Decepticons must band together from a small, desperate outpost and fight for survival against the corruption brought by the shards of ages. So it sounds like a good majority of this game will take place on Earth, and this Aegis thing is going to be the end of MacGuffin of the game, I say. And considering that this is a powerful weapon that's been shattered into shards, I wouldn't be surprised if those shards will be utilized in the form of power-ups. Anyways, the document mentions the various features this game will have, starting with the following. Gather the Transformers. Venture into the corruption. Find Transformers. Bring them back. Transformation. Transformation in the vehicle enhances movement in combat. Factual choices. Missing choices drive you towards the Autobots slash the Decepticons. Dynamic headquarters. Headquarters and NPCs in it are varying depending on the moral choices. Diverse environments. Each shard is a new zone, Antarctica, Sahara, New York, etc. Starting with just a single player Transformer, it is up to the player to rebuild the Transformers presence on Earth. Players will collect new Transformers through gameplay or purchase. Each playable Transformer has a unique playstyle and abilities and is designed to fit each ability set. So as you hear, these Aegis Shards will have a negative effect on the Transformers who will inhabit them. Something tells me that you'll have to fight and defeat them before you're able to recruit or bring them back with you. What I find interesting is the part where it says that the Autobots and Decepticons will band together. Like you'd assume that they'd be fighting against one another, but it looks like this big catastrophe and struggle to stay alive will have them allying with each other. I still think there will be the occasional bout between both factions since Megatron is known for being this power hungry warlord who demands to be the leader. When it mentions that transformation into vehicles enhances the movements in combat, I think it's safe to assume that playing in vehicle mode will play very similar to that of the Cybertron games where you can stray from side to side when you're shooting or go into full on burst mode for speeding things up. It's something that the brilliant minds at High Moon Studios introduced and it works so well that I can see certain affinity lifting the element and reworking it for their game. These shard worlds or locations will serve as hub worlds that will be altered due to the shards will be similar to Destiny, so you'll be able to interact with other players online in combat spaces. This is sounding more like an action MMO with Transformers, which I think is a huge plus for this title. Something that the TF gaming community has been yearning for is a solid online experience. Ever since Activision closed down the services to the old Transformers IPs, there has been this huge void, because the online multiplayer was essentially the lifeline to those games. People put tons of hours into those. And if this game can at least deliver a solid experience on that front, it's going to keep players around. But the thing that I think will be a deal breaker is the fact that you probably won't be playing as the well-known Transformers characters such as Optimus Prime. Like right here where it says that the main playable characters will be new recruits from Cybertron and the surrounding Transformers colony worlds, and how main canon characters will serve as mentors. I personally don't have a problem with that, but I can see some taking an issue with it. It's going to be weird seeing these characters as nothing more than cool NPCs who you wish to you could get your hands on but you simply can't but hopefully we do get a chance to play with them in some of the other different modes it says here that the mentors will give you advice and quests back at the headquarters and they'll join the fight alongside you on custom missions this last part pretty much confirms that you will in fact be able to play as the key characters but only during unique missions so there you go now when they mention the colony worlds i think they could be alluding to the different types of transformers like maybe we could get the super fast characters like blur who comes from the velocitronians or the junkie who are damn near indestructible. It sounds like this game could possibly be expanding on the different lore too, especially when you read this part. Ground, aerial, and beast movement modes create new opportunities. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I see the words beast movement, I instantly think of Beast Wars, which has me thinking that the Maximus and Predacons could be added to the mix. Like, I would not be surprised if this game actually takes it there. Hasbro has an expensive library of Transformers lore, and they might be dumping over their toy chest of epic characters for this game. I'm assuming that they want this game to be a huge success, especially with micros, and I think that if this free-to-play game delivers on all fronts, players will decide if the devs should be compensated financially through all these micros, whether it be purchasing cosmetics or characters they don't feel like grinding to unlock. That's another thing the Warframe game does well. It doesn't necessarily force predatory micros on the players, there's more than enough content that'll keep you playing for months on end. As I said earlier, it would be a no-brainer for Layu to actually bring some of the Warframe devs on board to help out. Like, I'm pretty sure they're gonna have to outsource more recruits to help them get through this pandemic. We'll just have to see how things work out. 
I'm hoping that we get a reveal in the near future too because other than these documents we don't have anything else to go off of. We still don't know how these designs are going to look or what the overall tone will be for this story. There are other things this document mentions but I think I've covered the more important bits to give you guys in general idea of what we're getting. Anyways I want to know what you think. Does the idea of this game being a Transformers meets Warframe in Destiny get you hyped or are you apprehensive that it could be a cash grab looter shooter? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I ask you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed this video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out in another video. Now, I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.